To the most hated show in the black corner of the internet. I'm your host, the Whiteologist, Mr. Blows Your Minds, and this is Black Minds News. This channel is to report, articulate, transmit, communicate, relate, unveil, decode, spread the news, whether it's by news, video, websites, or quotes from publications. As I articulate these information, I accept the creator of the universe, be here, heart, soul, mind, and spirit. Because why? The truth don't need no partner. As a descendant of the greatest people who created this land that you call the United States, we, the foundational blacks of America, the bloodline, lineage, historical people who call themselves BADOS. Black American descendant slave. Some say Black African American descendant slaves. Others say ADOS, American descendant of slaves. We, the children descendant and lineage of that, we give honor to our ancestors. And you know what my motto of my show is? I'm never going to tell you what I heard. I'm only going to tell you what I know. Today's date, August 2nd, 2019. Well, this is going to be the follow-up of the young little brother that was at the school that we did the story about. The end up, Bryce Lindsley. Remember that story I just did a couple days ago? Well, it looks like that the Michigan DA has decided drop the charges. Let me say that again. Looks like the DA of Michigan decided she's going to drop the charges. Now again, some people don't understand why black media is needed and what effect that black media has on situations like that one. Our sisters, our persistence, and then what the mother did brought the attention that they couldn't hide it and the pressure from society which we are considered uh, social what we gonna say yeah, social journalists that's who we become now social journalists and due to that you have to take your hats off for everybody who did participated in that because again as I laid out in that story and talked about certain things that just didn't again connect Yes, children going to be children, boys going to be boys, but when you have an exception in the case where somebody may have some impairment, physical disabilities, medical issues, then it's incumbent on those who are acknowledgeable about the situation to prevent all measures so that they don't get themselves hurt. So when kids going to be kids, they are to be reprimanded. When they step out of bounds and out of the line. Once you suspended them, how did it become a legal situation? So did somebody decide to push it further beyond the envelope? That's what we saw, right? Now, what I want to show you is why the mother was persistent on what she did to get the media attention she did, sought out the attorney, because there was a history unknown to many of us and today Black Minds News is going to give you a little bit of history as to what could have been even though it was not in the same category but again they say where there's smoke there's fire well let me show you what I'm talk about stay tuned for this broadcast Hey 
Hey, hey, how's y'all doing again? This is Mr. Blow Your Minds coming with another Black Minds News Report. Okay, again, today's date is going to be August 2nd, 2019. And uh, we're doing the follow-up on the story that we did about Bryce Lindsay, the 10-year-old, that uh, was charged with aggravated assault for the chucking a ball, the Caucasian boy who, according to what his mother has stated, that he had previous ailments, ailments that if he had any kind of injury to the head, it could become fatal. And so, due to, again, if you haven't seen, I guess you should see, and uh, I don't have to reiterate so much of it, but the fact of it is, that's what it was. And so let me say this before I get into this. First and foremost, I want to say what's good to my subscribers. Old and new, what's good, fam? Glad to see you here participating. Again, some of you are a little slow about what you do, but you know, you got things to do. I get it. It is what it is. And again, I am also fighting against the system, which is YouTube doing what it is doing. Thinking I don't understand, uh, again, how the suppression is going by keeping my attention right i'm saying that people who are watching i would like for those again who might see tell me how long it is that you watch don't be in shame about it send it to me because again these people want me to believe that a video that almost went a thousand and anybody said only two minutes and they was up out of there that's what they want me to believe i got everything documented i'm gonna do a video on it so just stay tuned for that anyway and those who passing by again welcome to the most hated show in the black corner of the internet Again, I'm your host, Mr. Blows Your Minds. Again, go down the aisle. We always got a grand opening. If you see something in there, if something should make you feel some kind of way, remember that the model of the show is the troop don't need no partner. Now, again, we got some people out here who, I don't know, you know, I just, I dealt with it the way that I wouldn't. You'd be the number first one I've ever done that to, right? Um, talking crazy, right? Talking on the side of their neck is what we say, right? Ask a question, answer the question, but keep asking more questions. So you make a statement, but then you can't validate it. Then you try to find something else. So, you know what I'm saying? Don't mess with that type. You go on about your long head, find somewhere else to go and play because that ain't what we do over here. Now, let me get back into this here. So, again, as it was, I told as in the intro of the show, 10-year-old Bryce Lindsay, again, who had been charged after certain things had already been done prior to that somebody persisted in this, thought that the school didn't do more. After it had suspended him for one day, right? And, uh, again, maybe the, the parent, and again, as parents, you do what you have to do to try to make a situation to alleviate if you feel like that this could escalate into something more. You ask for, you know, to have separation that the school would guarantee you, and yet you still want it more. So, okay. So, it seemed like to me it came a little bit more personal Due to the history, and this is again the part that I'm going to get to, due to the history that a lot of us may not know about in Detroit or mid the Michigan area, that they had stories in the history about young men, I won't say young men, young people who the system has grabbed and Basically, was about to set them away for the rest of their life. One particular story that I want to tell you to show you to start off with. Have you ever heard of Devante? Hmm? Let me say this right now. So some of you might remember, right? You ever heard of Devante Sanford? Hmm? Devante Sanford. This story. Um. Let me give you a little background of this. And that's why I can best way to show it to you that way, right? So, 
here's this. Okay, so we got Devontae Deshaun Sanford. He is an American exoneree, right? He got exonerated, right? He was wrongfully convicted for a murder of four people known as the Runyon Street Slaying, okay? And uh, what's, what's unusual about this story, again, it's not for the simple fact that we don't hear about people being murdered. What's the connecting as to why I'm going to show you this history before we get into the Bryce Lindsay situation. This is the history. So, Devontae, he was born and raised in Michigan, but he grew up in the city of Detroit. His mother's name is Tomiko Sanford, and uh, he has a sibling, right? And that's what they talk about. But back on September of 2017, what happened was Devontae somehow seen an investigation that was near his home, right? And uh, where, again, they talk about the four people had been murdered. This now was, again, at the neighbor's house, okay, at his neighbor's house. That day, he had went outside in his pajamas to see what was going on because, again, just imagine seeing a lot of police cars, red tape, I mean, yellow tape, and all that other good stuff, right? And so, again, somebody is as young as he is, and now, again, He's a young boy. He's only 14 years old. Accordingly, they say that he supposedly had some mental issues, right? That's, that's what they say, okay? And so, being inquisitive, what he did is he's kind of within the vicinity of this crime scene. So, accordingly, they say that a canine uh, officer's dog kind of sniffed off the trail and came up at Devante, who was a, across the street from at the park of the crime scene. And so what they did is the police, based on uh, the dog, supposedly this is what they say, sniffing him out, goes over there, questions a 14-year-old, right? And when the cops start talking to him, he told the cops, according to what they say, that he knew some. Now, according to saying he knew some of the people, right, that lived there. Now, again, he's 14. Now, again, they're saying that he had some mental health conditions. That's what they say. And so he knew some of the killers and named some of the, the kids that he knew in the neighborhood, right? That's what the police said that he had said. And so what the police end up doing, they arrive later to where I guess he was staying with his grandmother. And the grandmother somehow, supposedly how they write this, is they talk about that the grandmother had signed off to allow the child, Devontae Sanford, to be taken by the police and bring in for questioning. Now, number one, if she's not going, right, somebody needs to, right? But again, that's why information is power, because when you don't know, you don't know. And so right there, that allowed him to be vulnerable for the simple fact that he's being questioned with no representation and no supervision of an adult. And so he's interrogated the first time, and accordingly they say, they chose to, uh, they did not choose to record. It's kind of like when we watched the Central Park Five. Originally, they did not record, and then they recorded later, right? And so, so later on, hours later, after they interrogated, they took him back home. Then they come back again and question and claim that he knows more than what he's letting on. Now, the police came to the assumption that based on what they heard from him, that he knew a lot. Now, again, remember, he's a neighbor. It's not like he don't know people in this house, right? And the neighbors and so forth. Oh, Mr. Blow, I thought we were sitting there talking about the 10-year-old. We, again, information is power, right? 
Now, according to the details by the police officer, it appeared that Devante had grew, he supposed to have drew a diagram of the murder scene. He marks exactly where each victim was shot. Accordingly, this here is what's putting him, according to his, like his own admittance, right? That's what it seems like, right? That That's what he does. So what end up happening is you see that Devante was sentenced to 37 to 90 years in prison. Now, they believe that he made his confessions under pressure. Now, his lawyer at that particular time when he originally went in, name was Robert uh, Slamaka, right? Robert Slamaka. And up until this point, his license has been since suspended. He was the one, according to what they say, according to the articles, that uh, Devante should plead guilty was his only option. Now, I'm going to say that again. He recommended that Devante should plead guilty as that is his only option. Now, Devante's family was shot and they were advised to do the plea. So at the time, they did it thinking it was the best choice for Devontae. Let me say that again. Here it is, his court-appointed court attorney, most likely. I believe it is, because it does not specify whether that is true or not. But what they do is, he offered him and said, this is the only deal, your only option you got. And so he was advised to do take the plea. So at the time, they thinking the parents, the best choice for him was to take this. Now, they talking about 37 to 90 years. What do you mean? Option, right? Unless they were talking about death penalty, right? So they end up 16 days after, about a month after he was convicted, Devontae Sanford, they had a professional hitman confess that he was the killing spree of 12 people. Okay? Let me show you. Uh, well, I don't need to show you that, that. Right. Okay. You'll see it as we play on. Okay? And the killings also included of the Runyon Street Slam that they had said Devontae had done. Devontae Sanford had done. Here is a man, Vincent Smothers, who's considered a professional hitman, is admitting that he was on the killing spree of 12 people, and the people that was in that house, he also was the one that killed them. Now, they knew this, right? And... He tells them exactly what kind of weapon he used. He told them that he had an AK-47. And uh, shooting, he said, at least three people on Runyon Street. He gives a description and graphic, extraordinary and accurate details of the 12 murders that he committed. He was precise. Exactly. Now, remember that they said that Devontae Sanford had drawn the picture. All right, keep that in mind. So what you have is Smothers admit that he did come out and confess he was the killer, but he had empathy for Devontae. He didn't want him taking that, right? It's kind of like, think about what the Central Park Five, isn't that what happened? Brother was in there that had did it, ran across my man, had a conversation and said, man, you still up in here? He's like, yeah, knowing he know, now at, during this part, he done already went became converted Christianity, started, you know, having his ways of looking towards his redemption, and he felt like this was the right thing, and he goes in and tells him, this is how this unravels that whole thing. Same scenario kind of like here, right? What's it got to do with uh, the young man, the 10-year-old? Be easy, be easy, be easy, right? And so... It says he felt empathy for Devontae because he wanted to take responsibility. 
And he had just had a newborn that I guess he felt like instead of him being on a run for four murders, that he would go ahead, deal with the situation, um, and possibly maybe if he take the plea deal, he's not going to get, let's say he's not going to get the death penalty, he'll get life, but he feel like he'll still be able to see his three-month-old, right? That was his mindset of how he looked at it. So we see that he is offered a plea deal, Eight counts of second degree murder with a sentence of 50 to 100 years. But what happened is, shockingly, Wayne County prosecutors never charged him. Ch All right. Listen, listen. Wayne County prosecutors never charged him with the four murders of the Runyon Street. They maintain that Devontae Sanford is the real killer. Now, remember, he's 14 years old, right? Somehow, medically, they know that he's supposed to be having some mental issues, right? And I always thought that they said that people with mental incapabilities, you know what I'm saying, can they really testify, right? They have to be declared if they have the mental capacity to be able to testify. So in this case, here was a person who confessed, give me all the details, but you're focusing on this little 14-year-old, right? Now, I don't mean that a 14-year-old can't do it, but some odd reason, you're stuck with this. Now, we've got to remember, this case became national attention. This was a big case. This was all known. 14-year-old killing. Woo so, keep that in mind because, again, as I've said many times during these news reports, that police officers' jobs are based on merit. Right? It's about merit. And so, you know, you could be promoted with a big case. Right? So keep that in mind. So we see in that sworn affidavit, we see that Smothers, who again is the professional hitman, he tells Innocent Clinic, I shot and killed four people at the 19741 Runyon Street. He even gives the address. Right? He says, I cannot emphasize strongly enough that Devontae Sanford was not involved. Devontae Sanford is being wrongfully incarcerated for crimes that I know he did not commit. Now, he's confessing. Listen what I'm saying. Here's the individual who's taking the responsibility according to what he said he had done. He doesn't want this young man taking it. He said he's willing to accept it. He know what he has done. He has specified and told everything about it. And guess what? They will not Except what he say. They want to be on this here. What is the reason for that, right? So, so later on they had a false confession, they say. They say after Smothers came out as the killer, Devontae charged his confession. He changed his confession. Well, I'm saying I'm sorry. He changed his confession. After they said, after that Smothers now said he admitted, now they're going to say, because remember, they end up getting Devontae to admit that he killed. Now, again, remember the way they said he did it was due to the drawing. He supposedly made this drawing that, matter of fact, you'll see. And then I'll show it. Well, I'll show it again. And so. That drawing is the thing that supposedly sets him up. All right. Now, let me go ahead and give you this now. Let's go ahead and get in this because you're going to say, that. Well, well, I'm not understanding, Mr. Bloody Man. I clicked on this thing. He was talking about the 10 year old. I got to show you this, y'all. So check this out. Be right back. A man who was convicted of a murder he did not commit will finally have his charges dropped. Today, Wayne County Prosecutor Kim Worthy held a news conference to discuss the latest developments in the case against Richard Phillips. You see him right there. Phillips was charged with first degree murder back in 1971 and spent the last 45 years behind bars. But evidence recently brought forward raised questions about the case. Worthy said a conviction integrity unit looked into claims that a key person who testified during 
Aaron Phillips' trial had lied. The newly discovered evidence from Mr. Palumbo shows that Mitchell, the central witness, lied during the Phillips trial, that Mr. And, and that later that Mr. Palumbo gave evidence under oath at, at, his, at the hearing before Judge Cox, saying that Fred Mitchell was the murderer who framed Mr. Phillips. Now, Phillips has always maintained his innocence. The case against him was dismissed in a judge's courtroom immediately following this morning's conference. Saying, right? You might be saying, wait a minute, I thought you about no, but that was another one. That one at this, that time had been the longest exoneree in the history of the United States. Came out of the same place. You see who the district attorney is. Evidence and stuff. Now, again, was she DA at the time? No. Probably most likely no. But it was on the desk, and then again, this was happened. So, again, there's a pattern here, right? I want you to see this, right? You got to see who the, the DA was, right? Now, let me show you this. Let me show you this. All right, so let's see this. A man who was convicted of a murder he did not commit will finally have his charges dropped. Today, Wayne County Prosecutor Kim Worthy held a news conference to discuss the latest developments in the case against Rich. Okay, so I don't know what's going on with that, right? Should be this one. Hold on. And with that breaking news now on the prosecutor's story in the case of Devontae Sanford, he became a free man yesterday after serving eight years in prison on a wrongful conviction. Prosecutor Kim Worthy just spoke to reporters. Seven Action News reporter Anu Prakash is live downtown to tell us why the prosecutor is standing by her decision in the case. Anu. Well, Joanne, Wayne County Prosecutor Kim Worthy says that it was just as of May 20th of this year that she says she got information that called into question the conviction of Devontae Sanford. Now, he was just 14 when he was arrested and later confessed and pled guilty to four murders at a Detroit drug house on Runyon Street. Now, almost nine years later, his conviction was vacated and he was released yesterday following an independent investigation done by Michigan State Police. Now, supporters of Devontae have long questioned why Vincent Smothers, a professional hitman who confessed to the murders was never charged. In a lengthy presentation this morning, the prosecutor laid out the evidence that she said did not point to Vincent Smothers at the time. She said she acted quickly after MSP found problems with the DPD police investigation into the murders, and she was pressed on why Vincent Smothers couldn't have been charged years ago instead of Devante. This is not a case where, as I said before, and I'm going to end on this, this is not a case where these allegations were made, they weren't followed up. I don't know what kind of, I, maybe it wasn't done to your satisfaction, but we did everything that we could do to follow up from those confessions. And then we had, again, the two years plus long hearing where the defense, as well as the prosecution, had an opportunity to call witnesses. They chose not to. They chose not to deal with, for whatever reason, that's something you have to ask them, on issues that get to the heart of some of the questions that you're talking about. Now, one piece of evidence that Worthy said that they relied on was testimony from then DPD Deputy Chief James Tolbert, who said this drawing of the crime scene was done by Devontae Sanford on a blank piece of paper. Well, now we've learned that during the recent MSP investigation and an interview of then DPD Deputy Chief James Tolbert, he admitted to drawing the house and that Devontae just drew the bodies. And because of that, we're told now there is a warrant request being reviewed for James Tolbert for a perjury charge. Bottom line, no matter how many times she was challenged on her handling of this case, Kim Worthy insists that her office was not running rogue and trying to railroad Devontae Sanford. As for the Runyon Street murders, at this point, her office is also reviewing a warrant request to charge Vincent Smothers as well as another man. It'll be interesting to see what Devontae Sanford's family and his attorneys have to say because we're expecting to hear from them later on this afternoon at 2 o'clock. Reporting live in downtown Detroit, Anu Prakash, 7 Action News. Anu, thank you so much for the update today. We are also following. Okay. Uh, I want to apologize for that little technical mix up on that one, right? Okay, so now you see that that's what happened. Devontae Sanford ended up being released, right? And. Uh, Again, that was a major national story, and you heard as it was displayed about what took place. 
I gave you some of the background because why? Because that's what took place. So here it is now that the 10 year old again, Bryce Lindsay, who again, the mother of the individual, the boy that got hit with the ball, took it before the DA and the DA decide to go ahead and charge him, right? So we see there's a little pattern here. And again, you see one incident where a man who had been in there for over 45 years be exonerated, right? Matter of fact, uh, Devontae Sanford is the first person in the, I think in the, uh, in Detroit to when they start paying out for a wrongful conviction, I think he's the very first one that they got the money. I think he got about $408,000 and uh, gained about less than about $50,000 a year, right? And then he tried to come back and try to get monies for being in juvenile for about so many hundreds of days and so forth. And they wouldn't pay him because they said it was separate. That is different from the state and so I believe that may have something to do with private industry right so anyway that's what that took place and then what happened is after he had got exonerated and got the money he went to Arizona uh, you know what normally happens you know a lot of people when they end up fighting with police and getting paid out they leave because they know that somehow possibilities of them being you know, harass and things like that. And so he gets to Arizona, suppose they go out into the mountains and they're shooting guns off. And somehow they said that they were shooting towards the park, but again, it arrested him. It became national attention and then somehow it became a misunderstanding. They dropped the charges and all this other stuff, right? But again, you know, it was, it was all tied and associated with. But, so that was the little background I wanted to give you. Now I'm going to give you this here and let's go from there all right let's show this and that that kid consented and he was playing the game now what kind of message did this send to our children should they be afraid of playing dodgeball playing participating in a in an after school or, or an activity during recess so what I'm asking the general public to do, something needs to change. I was a prosecutor myself. If this came across my desk, I would have never authorized the charge. Something needs to change within Kim Worthy's office and the Wayne County Prosecutor's office. I'm asking for a call to action. I want the general public to contact Kim Worthy's office and tell her to let children be children. Understand she has dismissed the charge. We're happy with that. But who knows how many other people are in a similar situation who may not have been able to hire an attorney, bring media attention to it, and get the charges dismissed. I'm asking the general public to contact her office and ask her to reform the way that they authorize charges against juveniles. Now, Ms. Lindley, what but for, um, but for a prosecutor to allow something like this to happen. And what this, I mean, he, Bryce is only 10 years old. To charge a child with aggravated assault who was playing a game is not okay. It's not okay. And he doesn't even realize how much something like this is. See, and then they cut it, right? Because again, the severity the seriousness of the situation, a 10-year-old, see, you, you start him off wrong, and then as that, he's angered, now the environment that breathes in him, now the recidivism because he's tainted, can't get acclimated back in society the way he should, then what end up happening? Then they say, oh, he's another wayward one. Look at it, look at you, look, look at you. But again, this could have all been avoided because, again, as you heard that attorney right there say, he himself was a former pro, uh, DA prosecutor or prosecutor. He says certain things come across his desk and certain things he look at and he assess and he said that wouldn't have went. But again, you know, 
Maybe it had something to do about who people had uh, ties and connection to. Maybe some nepotism involved somewhere, right, that we don't see. And so, but again, since her tenure that she's been there, we have seen, I, doing the research, have seen quite a few um, press conferences where she is now exonerating people who supposedly have been guilty. Now, am I saying that's 100% of, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, I, I just believe that if, you know, mistakes can be made, you know, what was air to be human? Hmm? To human is to, to air, right? And so, that means that there's always a possibility of chance. But again, if we're meticulous and try to resolve and get to, uh, you know, resolution of a situation. And sometimes there's political pressure. There's the status of certain people. So things have to be resolved to, you know, to quell down certain parts of segment of society. And other people take the back burner because, again, they're not as important. And so that means it's an imbalance in the way this is done, right? And so sometimes in situations, if it wasn't for, you know, the mother understanding being there as a resident and been living there, knowing maybe she did, maybe she didn't. But again, compared to how you've seen with, and again, this is no shot at them as a family member, but I'm saying what happened with Devante Sanford and how they kind of actually co-signed everything due to the simple fact maybe they were lack of knowledge, right? But this mother here, Miss Lindsay here, seemed to, again, was able to get attorney right away, jump on it right away, and again, because it came into the social media, and again, like as I say, the social journalists did what they did, it reached to the right places, it got to the right, and put a certain kind of pressure, and uh, it overturned it, and so we had to see the real importance of what we do as black media out here, right? And they understand the importance of what we do. We're not, again, general media has its agenda and why it does what it do, and it's only going to tell you the stories the way it want to be done. That's why we have to do what we do in order to talk and to get to the points that are needed. So, again, just wanted to bring that forward because, again, that is the update on that. But I want to give you a little history to that because there's something. Could it be an individual? You have to tell me how you see it. Is there something with this individual? Because, again, this person was 14. Everything that had came out, again, a lot of suspect stuff that had been said, whether a person who confessed that did it, yet you knew this, yet you ignored it. You were persistent in making sure that this one was. So, again, it's kind of like here. You're going to be persistent to make sure that he would. And, again, if he could have got buried in the forest, if the trees could have covered it and nobody could have known, Bryce, again, maybe he doesn't do time, but he will be scarred in his, you know, background that would have cared with him for the rest of his life, right? And then again, being 10, he still haven't gone through, you know, the growing pains of going through trial and error, but he already scarred at 10, so by the time he do his first mistake, he's already going to be penalized because he already has something prior. So commend black media for what we've done, and again, this is Black Minds News. Peace, love, and hair grease and all that good stuff. Universal Night, what's good, what's brother? You know what I'm saying? What's good, sister? What's good, brother? You know what I'm saying? We in this together. To the next show, y'all. To the next show.